we've found out from Dan Bongino and from other sources within within the government that the Secret Service have basically been put pressured on to uh, suppress the details of the shooting and to make any excuse about it. We've got comp- they've, they've basically passed the buck off to the local uh, county police uh, police sheriff. We've got a situation where they've blamed a slopey roof for not having um, people on that particular building. We're finding out that there was actually law enforcement in the neighbouring building there as well. The Secret Service have also were warned hours before that there was this threat by lo- local law enforcement, but nothing was done. They allowed Trump to go on the stage. We find out more details about the shooter. The shooter was actually a Republican member, which we're going to hear from the panel on about, but he actually donated to the Democratic Party Uh, an organization called Back the Blue. And on top of that, we're we're hearing from a lot of his schoolmates about um, the bullying um, bullying Hispanic um, Republicans that are actually in his his, um, classroom. Um, And we've got a timeline, if we can pull this up on the screen, the timeline of when Crooks the Shooter was actually identified as a person of interest was at 5.10 p.m. At 5.30 p.m., Crooks was spotted... With a range find, with a range finder in his hand, which is used for shooting, at 5:52 p.m., Crooks was spotted on the roof by Secret Service, and 6:02 p.m., Trump takes the stage. So well before an hour, and an hour before he really sort of took took the stage and everything, a um, little under an hour, he took the stage. But before that, Crooks was actually identified as a threat, and at 6:12 p.m., Crooks fires the first shot. Um, there's a lot of people that are demanding answers on this. Um, guys, just a, 